The perfect morning routine, something we all want to finally be productive, win the days and get ahead of 99% of people. Hell yeah! So, is there an actual formula to build the perfect morning routine? The short answer is yes, but there are some considerations to keep in mind. In this video, I'll tell you everything I've learned from the greats in the process of finding the right morning routine for me. So the waking time is up to your bedtime, of course. I go to bed at 9.45 because that's when I feel ready to sleep. My eyes at that time are like, bro, please, it's time. Ideally, you should be in bed for eight hours to sleep at least seven hours and a half. That's what the average human needs. If you sleep less, you won't be at your best. And if you sleep more, you'll feel similar to when you are hungover. What's up with that? You're just gonna wake up from a later sleep cycle, meaning you'll feel groggy and tired. Even though you've rested more, if you struggle to wake up in the morning, it might be because of that. So next time, aim for seven hours and a half, no more than eight, and you'll see the difference. With that information out of the way, according to Andrew Huberman, you should wake up and get sunlight in your eyes right away. No shower, no sunscreen, no clothes, nothing. Just get up and go, ideally outside. Some people do it, not me. This is where you start tweaking your routine depending on your life circumstances. Where I live, the sun starts rising at around 6.20, so I have a bit of time to drink my water, take a shower, and then go like a normal human. This sunlight exposure in the morning is crucial for your day because when we expose our eyes to morning sunlight, our body releases serotonin, the feel-good chemical that enhances your mood throughout the day. Something as short as a 10-minute walk does the trick, on cloudy days a bit longer. If you can't go for a walk because you need to be at work at that time or do something else, you can also reap the benefits by sitting near a window that lets in natural light for a little while. Back from the walk, it's time to work. You may be wondering, what about coffee, dude? Breakfast? I actually drink my first coffee two hours after waking. What? I've been trying to delay my first coffee for about two hours. I'll tell you why when it's time for coffee. For now, all you need to know is I feel better when I do. So I sit down to work around 7 a.m. and I usually work for about 60 minutes. This working session is not my most productive because I am not at my best at this time of the day, but I look forward to it every day because after this session, it's coffee time and I take a long break to enjoy it. Some say the most successful don't have morning routines, they just wake up and go for as long as they can. But even if I were to be the most productive dude on the planet doing that, that's not how I really wanna live my life. I'm a big fan of restorative breaks. Coffee, meditation, cold showers, music, I find them essential to be more creative and not burn out. Which is crucial if you want to stay in the game long term without going insane. Something I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video is I take cold showers, not every day because they're hard, but they're great. The reason for this, according to science, is cold exposure causes a significant release of adrenaline, increasing your levels of energy and focus. As a side note, I don't start showering with cold water right away because I am not a psychopath. I leave the cold therapy for the end, just one minute and I'm out. I've been using this free app Recast to actually get through my infinite article backlog and it's been a game changer. If you've got articles lined up you want to read, Recast uses AI to turn them into concise rich audios where its virtual host explain them to you. Recast back and forth combo format makes all the difference. It feels like a podcast. You can submit your own articles or discover what other users submit. It's a new way to read without reading, whether you are on the go, working out or simply enjoy listening. It's engaging easy to understand and saves tons of time. Because let's face it, there is more interesting things to read out there than we'll ever have time for. I personally use it the most when I'm preparing stuff in the kitchen or when I go for walks. There is an iOS app, web app, as well as a browser extension to easily submit. I use it to recast articles I find going through my email newsletters or just browsing throughout the day. Full disclosure, this video is in collaboration with Recast. I am loving the app and I think you will too. You can use it for free and there are some pro features if you want to support for the team, you can use my promo code RobertCreating. I'll leave a link in the video description with all the information. Right, so I found out that waiting at least 90 minutes to drink your morning caffeine can have significant benefits for your energy and overall well-being. The simple explanation is the first two hours of the day, cortisol is at a natural peak, but if you drink coffee, you will interrupt the cortisol rhythm in your body, which can lead to fatigue. So your morning coffee, it's actually making you more tired if you drink it within the first hour after waking. It doesn't make sense, I know, but trust me, I've been doing it for over a month now and my energy is back. Now, 
I'm not saying it's gonna be easy. Certainly it's been a challenge for me because I was used to start my days drinking coffee right away. However, the trade-off is worth it. I replaced the coffee with lemon water and a pinch of sea salt because I don't usually eat anything early in the morning. I do intermittent fasting, more on that later, and the drink replenishes electrolytes. It makes me feel better. It's not the same as coffee, but it's something. From 9 to 12, I am at my best, so I leave the most important work for this block of the day, and I do deep work, meaning full concentration on the task at hand. I try to stay away from my phone, social media, email or whatever gets in the way because 80% of my work is done during this window of time. Now, sometimes I break the rules because I am human. Important emails or people calling me, no one calls me. Not even my mom. Anyways, I try to protect this time of the day because it's important. Peak time is not gonna be the same for everyone, of course. Some people are way more productive in the afternoon or at night. I guess this exercise we're doing here, building a solid morning routine, takes experimentation and iteration. After work, it's time to eat. I've talked about intermittent fasting in some of my videos before, and some of you have asked why I do it and what's my protocol. I do intermittent fasting or time-restricted feeding, usually 16 by 8, breaking my fast at noon, but I'm not so rigid about it sometimes i break my fast at 10 or before if i'm really hungry i just listen to my body the main reason i do it is because i find it easier to lose weight because when you're following a time restricted feeding diet it is harder to eat more calories than you need sometimes i feel sharper but i also feel capable of doing mentally demanding work when i eat so no big difference in that department on to what i eat i don't follow a vegan paleo keto or carnivore diet again i listen to my body i just eat the food that makes me feel good. Talking about meat, vegetables, healthy fats, and carbohydrates. Balanced nutrition. In the end, the best nutritional plan is the one we can sustain. When you eat different macronutrients during the day will definitely impact how you feel. I usually leave my carbs for after my workouts to feel better throughout the day because they tend to make me sleepy if I have them in the morning. I also enjoy them more at night, but that's just personal preference. And that's the end of the morning. After going through all my routine and the things that experts do, you may have a better idea of the best times for you to wake up, work, have your first meal, your first coffee, the kind of restorative practices to implement during your breaks, so on and so forth. You don't have to follow exactly what anyone does. For instance, I like Andrew Huberman, I prefer my workouts after eating because I feel stronger. So I leave physical activity for the end of the morning or at night and that's what works for me. But I guess knowing what experts do and why is important information to at least have a science-based framework to make your routine. So let's recap. If you wanna feel awake, energetic, and be productive in the morning, don't oversleep. Seven hours and a half to eight hours is enough for most of us. You'll feel way better sleeping just the right amount of time. Find it. Sun exposure for at least 10 minutes in the morning, ideally outside for better mood and sleep. Cold showers will boost your dopamine, leading to better mood as well. Some form of meditation will help you decompress, important to stay focused. Delay your first coffee for at least 90 minutes. It'll make a huge difference in the afternoon. You can try fasting, it might help you feel better in the morning and lose weight, but hey, keep in mind, I'm not a doctor, I'm just a dude telling you what works for me. When making changes in nutrition, you should always talk to your doctor first. And last but not least, if you struggle with being productive, I'll leave a video I just made here where I talk about how I manage my time and the apps I use to be more productive. It might help you plan your working sessions better. That's it for this one, thank you so much for watching, I appreciate the support, I'll catch you in the next one, goodbye.